So, we continue with our discussion. Now, in this lecture, we shall be taking another example through which we shall be showing you the partitioning of the data path and the control path and how we can code the two things in Verilog. So, this is the part 3 of our lecture. Now, in this lecture, we shall be taking an example a signed multiplication algorithm, a well known algorithm called Booth's algorithm. Now, um, okay, you are uh, just familiar with the conventional way we multiply numbers. Like you think of the multiplication method that you learnt in schools. Suppose we are multiplying a number 235 by say 17. So, you take the individual digits of the multiplier you multiply them 7 into 5 35 5 with a carry of 3, 7 21 24 with a carry of 2, 7 to the 14 and 2 16. Then we shift one bit to the left, we may keep a gap, then multiply by 1 5 3 2 and then we add. This is the product. So, our normal process is we keep our partial result same and and whenever you look at the next digits we shift it left and add but in a real multiplication we do slightly different we keep the partial result in a pair of registers well let's say this is your uh, m let's say this is your uh, m1 and m2 let's say Suppose, we load m 1 here and load this with 0 and depending on the next digit or next bit of m 2, we add something to m 1 and after adding the result goes back to m 1. Then we shift m 1 to the right one place. Instead of shifting left and adding, we add in the same position, but the partial product we shift right. It is uh, same thing for example, 1645 if you shift, shift right one place and add 235 that is also the same thing right. So, this is how it works. Now, in a normal shift and add multiplication this I example I showed for decimal here we work in binary where the bits of the number are considered. Suppose, when you add let us say 0 1 0 1 1 0 with let us say 1 0 1 we do the same thing like like here I am showing this process when you multiply 1 with this. So, it remains when you multiply 0. So, everything is 0 there is a gap when you multiply 1 again there are 2 gaps 0 1 1 0 1 0 then we add all of them up this is how you do shift and add multiplication. So, what you do so whenever you check the next bit you continuously carry out the addition here. So, that you do not have to store so many partial products, you store only one partial product here and as you check the successive bits the, the addition is carried out and the partial result is getting stored here again. So, at the end the final product will be stored here right. Now, in the conventional method the point to notice that whenever we are multiplying two n bit numbers, then we have to check for all the n bits of the multiplier. So, we will have to repeat the process n times depending on whether the bit was 0 or 1. So, we will be we will be adding either 0 or the multiplicate to the partial product as, as I said the partial product is of size double there are two registers we are putting side by side as the partial product. Because when you add let us say two 8 bit numbers the result will be double the size result can be 16 bits in size. So, multiplying two n bit numbers will generate a result which will be two n bits in size ok fine. So, this conventional shift and add method requires n additions and n shift operations for every bit you have to add either 0 
or the multiplicand depending on the next bit of the multiplier and you repeat it n times right. Now, in this context both the algorithm is an improvement well it requires n shift operations all right, but it requires less than n addition or subtraction operations. So, if there are consecutive zeros and ones in the multiplier you skip the addition or subtraction step which makes the process faster. So, the basic idea behind the algorithm is that we inspect two bits of the multiplier at a time the ith and i minus 1 th bit. So, the rule is very simple it says if the two bits are either 0 0 or 1 1 there is no need to do any addition or subtraction then you do only shifting, but if you find that these two bits are 0 1 then you add the multiplicand and then shift if it is 1 0 then you subtract and then shift and to start with uh, q minus 1 that means the last bit after the this significant bit is assumed to be 0 and because we are skipping through 0 0 and 1 1 this will reduce the number of addition subtractions in the process. This is the flow chart of the Boots multiplier. So, you see here we have a register A initialized to 0 and Q which contains the multiplier. So, it is something like this there are two registers we are saying this is A and this is Q initially A is initialized to 0 and Q is loaded with the multiplier and we check this bit and there is another flip flop we say we call it q minus 1 because this q will start from q 0 up to q let us say n minus 1 if it is n bit register and a will start from a 0 up to a n minus 1. So, let us say this is q minus 1. So, we will be checking two bits at a time like this. So, what we do? and there is a register count which will contain the number of bits that means, how many times you have to repeat that is n and m contains multiplicand and this q contains multiplier. So, so in every step we check q 0 and q minus 1 we check this q 0 and q minus 1 whether they are 0 0 1 1 0 1 or 1 0. So, we check the conditions. So, if it is 0 0 or 1 1 we skip the addition or subtraction step if it is 0 1 we do a equal to a plus m if it is 1 0 we do a equal to a minus m. So, with this a we either add or subtract m and the result we store back into a right and then we do a right shift we do arithmetic right shift of a q and q uh, m, m minus 1 all together. This means, I right shift here into multiplier, multiplier will get right shifted into q minus 1 and arithmetic right shift means the most significant bit of a which is the sign bit that will be shifted back. So, if a is negative it will remain negative right and then we decrement count and repeat till count is not 0 right. So, these are the basic registers which are required in addition we need an adder subtractor ok. So, let us work out a couple of examples to have a feeling how the multiplication works. Let us take a simple example let us say we multiply minus 10 with 13 we assume these are 5 bit numbers uh, m minus 10 is 10110 zero, zero in two's complement representation. Well, just for convenience I am also showing minus m minus m will mean plus 10 plus 10 in binary is 01010 zero, zero, zero. and q the multiplier is 13. So, we load a with 0 q 
q with the multiplier and q minus 1 is 0. Then we check these two bits q 0 and q minus 1. So, it is 1 0 means we have to subtract m. Well, just for convenience subtracting m means adding minus m. So, it will be easier to understand that is why I have shown minus m. So, we subtract m means we add 0 1 0 1 0 minus m we add. So, a becomes 0 1 0 1 0. Then we do a right shift whole right shift this 0 gets shifted and everything gets shifted right one place and this 1 gets shifted here. So, this process we repeat next we see this is one, 0 1 which means we have to add to this a we will have to add m. So, if you 0 0 1 0 1 plus 1 0 1 1 0 if you do you will see you will get the result 1 1 0 1 1 this you can check. If you do it then you shift in the same place this is arithmetic shift. So, this 1 gets shifted now the 2 bits are 1 0. So, it is again subtraction. So, we again do a subtraction that means we add minus m to this 0 1 0 1 0 add to this you get 0 0 1 1 1 then do a right shift. Now, we have 1 1 1 1 means no need to do add or subtract just shift simply shift simply shift now you get 0 1 that means addition addition. So, it is 5 bits 5 steps are over and your final result minus 130 which is in plus complement is this you see the same result is obtained this is our final result. Okay. Let us take another example. Suppose we are multiplying minus 31 with 28 and in 6 bit representation, let us say numbers are in 6 bits. Multiplier q 28 is in 6 bits, a is also 6 bits. So, m minus 31 and also minus m is shown. So, we see 0 0 just shifting, no addition subtraction, only shift right. So, it is again 0 0 shift again now it is 1 0 subtract. So, minus m you add to this it becomes this then shift then again 1 1 just only shift. So, again 1 1 just shift again now 0 1. So, you will have to add to this you add m this will be the result and then shift and this will be your final result. So, you see here you need only 2 additions or subtraction rest of the time you are only shifting. So, in general when in the multiplier you have consecutive zeros and 1s you can go on shifting this whole thing a q and q minus 1 without doing any addition or subtraction right. Okay. So, now let us come to the data path. Now, we have understood what we are doing. First thing is that a q and q minus 1 must be connected as a shift register. So, a is an n bit register, q is an n bit register, q minus 1 is a flip flop. So, and m contains the multiplicand. So, from outside we will have to load the multiplicand as well as we will have to load the multiplier. So, for that we need a load m control signal and a load q control signal right. Well, of course, we do not require this clear q, but because we are using two registers of the same type this a needs to be cleared. So, there is a clear control signal and there is a load control signal also a because the output of the addition or subtraction will get stored back into a for that there is a load a and there is a shift control signal shift a shift q this is the shift register mode control signal. And for the flip flop there is a signal to clear it reset clear flip flop and the output of the flip flop we are calling it q m 1. And this a l u takes a and m as the two inputs and there is a control signal add or subtract. So, if it is 0 it will add if it is 1 it will subtract the output let us call it z. So, it is simple. Okay. So, data path again there are so many control signals as we enumerated 
and from the data path q 0 and q m 1 are coming this q 0 this 0 and q m 1 because these two bits we have to check to decide that whether to add or subtract or only shift right and the rest signals are the same. Now, let us come to the control path. So, again the same flow chart I am showing and here I am identifying the states. Now, this loading of the data I have divided into two states multiplicand m multiplier q you see count equal to 15 you can do together because count here although I have not shown here there will be another register called count which will be loaded with 15 and it will be decremented right. But that can be done in parallel because from data in you are loading either m or q you cannot do these two things in together in parallel that is why loading m and loading q are in two different states. Then depending on this q 0 q 1 if it is 0 1 I do addition I call it s 3 1 0 subtraction I call it s 4 or otherwise shifting I call it s 5. At the end when you are done count equal to 0 I call it s 6. So, this state transition diagram will look like this if you see compared side by side. So, from S 0 whenever we give the start signal it goes to S 1 then to S 2 and from S 2 depending on the result of the comparison I can either go to S 3 or S 5 or S 4 depending on these two bits. Now, once I am in S 3 well I can either go back you see from here I go to S 5 sorry from S 3 I go to S 5 there is only one path S 3 to S 5 and also S 4 to S 5, S 3 to S 5, S 4 to S 5 and from S 5 there is a comparison I either go to S 6 or I go back in this comparison and can go to S 3 or to S 4. So, from S 5 I can go to S 3 or to S 4. So, the condition for going to S 3 is that q 0 q minus 1 is 0 1 and this count is not 0 and we go to S 4 if it is 1 0 and the count is not 0 sorry this will also be not 0 and if it is 0 then it will come to S 6 right fine. So, now we can straight away write down the data path just from this diagram which is shown the same thing just see here these are the parameters the exact the signals that we have identified there load a load q load m clear a clear q clear flip flop these are all input signals data in which is coming from outside to load m and q this is an input signal 16 bits and q m 1 and equal to z 0 these are output signal which will be going to the controller and a m q z are temporary signals of type wire and count I need uh, I need to initialize the count to 15 right 15 and go down to 0. So, 15 I can store in 4 bits 5 bits. So, I use a counter of appropriate size. So, 15 I could have used a 3 bit 3 to 0 a 4 bit counter also ok. So, this is no problem. So, using an assign statement I use a reduction and operation this is actually a NAND to just check for 0 actually this is for checking for uh, 0 the count is 0 or not yeah reduction or. So, you take the or of all the bits and then you do a not. So, if the bits are all zeros, then it will become 1. Now, you instantiate these modules ship register A, ship register Q or D flip flop, then there will be a parallel in parallel register for M and A LU which will do either addition or subtraction and a counter which will take the value of count and decrement it right. So, these modules you can actually verify the parameters I am showing the different modules that you have defined this is shift register module. So, here the parameters are 
the arguments data out is the output data data in is, so it is like this it is a shift register the output parallel data out is you call as data out the input you call as data in just see the other signals serial in clock load clear shift so there is a serial in signal for shift register then in addition there are some um, control signals like there is a clear signal you can clear this register then you can load this register with data in load signal then there is also another signal shift so when you want to shift it and of course there will be a clock these are all the signals i mean at the boundary of a of this ship register so this is a ship register we have designed here data in is a 16 bit number data out is also 16 bit and this is our description so whenever clock comes this is synchronous clear and load we check if clear is 1 if clear is 1 data out becomes 0 so we initialize it to 0 else if load is active then whatever there is data in that goes to data it is loaded else if shift control is active then this s in and data out 15 up to 1 this entire thing gets shifted left by one position into data out right so this is shift right so this is how we are implementing shift right data out 15 to 1 you see data out data out is a 16 bit quantity right this is your bit 0 this is bit 1 and this is bit 15 and there is something which is coming from outside this is your s in now we want to shift it right so what we expect is that this bit should go out and whatever is here this should be shifted right one position and go here so s in and bit number 15 to 1 whole together should be assigned here that is exactly what we wrote s in and data out 15 to 1 is assigned to data out this creates the shifting similarly the people register is very simple parallel in parallel out so it has a data out data in clock and a load so here whenever clock is coming if load is active data in goes to data out and then we have the flip flop we already seen a flip flop description earlier so it has a clear input if clear is active then q becomes zero output else q becomes equal to the input d then alu output the two inputs and there is a control signal if at sub is equal to zero you do subtraction if it is one you do addition and there is a counter so if there is a uh, load count signal so, so initially if you activate load count so it will be initialized to data out is initialized to 10000 else if decrement is active data out is decremented by 1 so you load it with 16 10000 means 16 you decrement it 1 by 1 and you check whether the result is 0 or not whenever it is 0 you stop right so you initialize it, it with 16 okay now the controller again if you follow that state transition diagram we have just coded it in the same way so i would recommend that you look at this controller design carefully vis a vis the state transition diagram that we have discussed earlier and see whether these specifications are matching okay so here again the parameters or the arguments are the same as whatever the controller is generating or taking as inputs q0 km1 there are seven states s0 to s6 so the state transitions are actually specified as per that diagram from s0 if start is active go to s1 from s1 go to s2 now in s2 you check whether these two bits q0 and km1 are 01 if it is 01 go to s3 
if it is 1 0 go to x 4 or otherwise go to s 5 means 0 0 or 1 1. So, if it is s 3 you straight away go to s 5, s 4 also go to s 5. So, in s 5 also you check if bits are 0 0 and not equal to 0 yet then go to s 3. If it is 1 0 and not equal to 0 go to s 4, but if it is equal to 0 you are done you go to s 6 and once in s 6 you remain in s 6. Uh, similarly, in the other block this is the blocking assignments here you have an always with state whenever state changes you just activate this. So, here all the control signals will be generated appropriately just you can check this. Okay. So, here uh, you are loading uh, m load m equal to 1 loading count the counter also you are loading the flip flop you are clearing a also you are clearing you are making a 0 you are activating all the signals together. Then in S 2 you are loading q now in S 3 you are activating at sub equal to 1 which means addition S 4 at sub equal to 0 which means subtraction. Okay. In this way you just follow the flow chart and see that whether we have activated the signals properly or not. Okay. So, the test bench I am not showing the test bench you can uh, write in a very uh, similar way, but one thing remember uh, here when you write such complex descriptions writing the test bench is not that easy. There are two things first thing is that you see the way I wrote I showed you the modules. So, I gave some delays in some places in, in some other places I, I did not give any delays. Now, I told earlier delays are only for simulation, but when you do synthesis. So, any real hardware will have some non-zero finite delay. right? So, in the actual scenario every block whatever you do will be having some delay. So, it is always good to specify some delays even during simulation. So, that at least you have a fair idea about what is happening. Now, when you give these delays like that when you generate the test bench or write the test bench writing the test bench is also not that easy now, because you will have to understand the timing very clearly in which clock in which time whatever is happening when do you have to apply the input when do you apply the load signal. So, unless these are very accurately done your final result will be wrong. So, writing the test bench is also not a trivial task it is also quite involved. Okay. So, this is exactly what is mentioned here that the timing must be very clearly analyzed and you need to activate the signal at proper time instances. So, if it is too early then some wrong values will be captured if it is too late then may be uh, some other values have been computed already. Because if you do not take these into account the simulation results will not come correct. Okay. But again I tell you may be simulation result is not coming correctly, but when you synthesize it your synthesized hardware might be correct, because your specification was done in a correct way. This is uh, you can say this is something which, which you have to remember this is uh, if you want to do correct simulation your synthesis there is no guarantee that it will happen or the other way also can happen. So, this actually comes with more and more practice and experience no one can really teach you that how to write a code. So, that there will be no error there will be no timing error. So, how to write good test benches this all come out of practice and experience. Okay. This is what I mentioned in the last point this cannot be taught this requires a lot of practice and experience this will automatically come with time as you design more and more. Okay. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture. So, over the last three lectures we discussed some examples using which you saw how a complex design can be partitioned into data path and control path and how we can write Verilog specifications for them separately and then integrate them together. Thank you.